Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and in this video we're going to be looking at a great little piece of retro tech recycling brought to you by Kero's Mac Mods and the Satanic Mac Club. This video is brought to you by channel sponsor PCB Way, but more on that in a moment. I recently received this in the mail from Kei Koba in Japan, a lovely Christmas card that plays a tune as well as this. Kei Koba is one of the genius contributors to the vintage tech community and the man behind Kero's Mac Mods and he has come up with this wonderfully novel idea. This is a 30 pin RAM SIM. They're typically available in capacities from 256 kilobytes to 16 megabytes and are used in many of the early 68K Macintoshes such as the Mac Plus, SE, SE30, Mac 2 Series, some LCs, Classic, Color Classic and early Quadras. This is a 72 pin RAM SIM. They're typically available in capacities from 1 megabyte to 32 megabytes and are used in some of the later Quadras and early Power Macs. Most of the vintage Macs I collect use 30 pin SIMs. If you're a vintage Mac collector like me and you have a shortage of 30 pin RAM SIMs, rather than trying to buy them, why not save some money and build your own? In this day and age, getting a printed circuit board is pretty cheap. So just source the right components and build it, right? The problem is that trying to source old RAM chips can be a real hassle. If you do manage to find someone selling them, you don't know if you're getting the real thing or some counterfeit rubbish. But what if you already had these RAM chips in your possession? If you have a few surplus 16 megabyte 72 pin RAM SIMs, it may interest you to know that some of them use the same chips that can be used to build 4 megabyte 30 pin RAM SIM. 4 megabyte 30 pin RAM SIMs are always in demand, most specifically for the Macintosh LC, LC2, Classic 2 and Color Classic computers. These Macs have some RAM soldered onto the logic board plus two 30 pin RAM sockets. The other thing they all have is a 10 megabyte maximum RAM limit. Even if you were to theoretically install 32 megabytes of RAM, the most they will address is 10 megabytes. For that reason, 4 megabyte SIMs are perfect for these computers. For example, the LC has 2 megabytes of RAM soldered to the board, so if you install two 4 megabyte SIMs, you get your maximum of 10 megabytes. With 72 pin SIMs, sometimes old 16 megabyte SIMs get decommissioned when a computer gets upgraded with a 32 megabyte megabyte SIM. So that old 16 megabyte SIM might just be sitting in a drawer doing nothing. Well now you can recycle that one 16 megabyte SIM and turn it into four 30 pin 4 megabyte SIMs. But here's a funny thing. I looked around in my surplus RAM and I had absolutely no 16 megabyte 72 pin RAM SIMs at all. I think I might have some installed in computers, but certainly no spares. But I do have these, a big pile of 64 megabyte 168 pin DIMMs, which were used in some of the Power Mac and Power Mac clone range of computers. This 64 megabyte DIMM has 32 2 megabyte chips, 16 on one side and 16 on the other. With this one DIMM, I can create 16 4 megabyte 30 pin SIMs. So that makes me incredibly happy. Using the PCBs from K, the RAM chips, some readily available ceramic capacitors, resistors and LEDs, I can build my own RAM SIMs. I've checked on the Kero's Mac Mods website and he has a list of the compatible RAM ICs and most of these chips are on it and I suspect that the ones not on the list might be fine too. Okay then, so we have everything we need to build these four megabyte RAM SIMs. I have the blank PCBs here. I have my 64 megabyte 168 pin RAM DIMM here. Um, now, each one of these chips on here is two megabytes in size and for each of these I need two. So two RAM chips going there. Um, there is also the option for a parity chip. Now I don't think any of the Macs I have require a parity chip so I'm certainly not going to be doing that. That is an optional extra if you want to turn them into a parity chip. 
Um, so you would put the parity uh, chip there and then you would need a little capacitor just there. Uh, now, because I'm not doing that, I don't need the chip, I don't need the capacitor either. But I will need the two megabyte chips here and each one of those has a 100 nanofarad capacitor for that as well. Uh, then you also have the option, if you want to, of putting an LED in that position there. Uh, and if you do use the LED, you'll need to put a 330 ohm resistor in that location there. I will be putting LEDs on these because I like sparkly things. They're meant to be 1206 sized components. I don't have any 1206, so I've got 80805s. Um, I'll be able to make them fit, that's fine. And even though they're a different size, they're still functionally the same, so that's all good. And I've got these LEDs, which I believe are red. Now I didn't actually go out and buy uh, these components specifically. I, uh, I just have one of these little sample books that you can get from AliExpress and they just contain loads and loads of different sized um, capacitors and resistors. And they're just really handy for a project like this because it, uh, it means I don't actually have to sit there and wait for a delivery of a particular component. I know I've got a few, or not a huge amount, but a few of each size already. Now the first thing we need to do with this is we need to separate uh, each of these uh, PCBs from each other. So for that, I'm just gonna grab a little pair of pliers and I'm just gonna snap off the sides. Like that. And then we can snap apart the uh, individual PCBs there. So they're all good to go. Uh, and the next thing we need to do is to get the chips off this. This particular DIMM uses Motorola uh, two megabyte memory chips. Now these are not listed as the um, suitable chips on uh, Kay's website. However, it is my belief that they will be okay. So I'm gonna test them out, hope for the best. And if they do work, that's another one we can add to the list saying that they are suitable for this. Um, they need to be two megabytes in size. They need to be this physical size and they need to be five volts, not 3.3 volts. So um, I'm pretty sure these qualify, but there's only way, one way to find out. Uh, now to get these off, uh, I'm going to be using a hot air station. Uh, if you don't have a hot air station, certainly don't attempt to do this with just a soldering iron, but what you could potentially do is bake it in an oven uh, with the temperature high enough to melt the solder. Uh, when it gets hot enough and the solder does li liquefy, you could then pluck those components off one at a time. But um, I'm certainly going to be using a, a hot air station for this. Let's fire up the hot air station and let's start getting these chips off. I'm going to just take the eight from on this side here, because eight is all I need. And there we have it. Before anyone gets up in arms about me destroying uh, a dim like this, uh, I need to explain first of all that uh, these are surplus to my needs. I have way more computers that use this size SIM than use this size DIM. So I have heaps of these, way more than I need. The other really important thing is that everything I'm doing here is reversible. So if at some stage in the future I regret doing this and don't want these SIMs anymore but want to have these DIMs back, I can just put the chips back on again, take them off here and put them on there. So no real problem there. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to the microscope view and I'm just gonna clean these up a little bit before putting them onto the board. I'm gonna take these one at a time, once they've cooled, pop them in this little vice thing to hold them and just uh, wick off some of the solder from the bottom of these pins. I want it to be nice and flat, makes it a lot easier for when I then solder it onto the new PCB. So I get myself some solder wick here and I then just run my iron across to just lift all of the excess solder from the bottom of these pins onto the wick so that those pins are now uh, free of any blobs of solder on the end. I'm not trying to get them completely clear of solder, just want to get any blobs from the end off um, because it will make it a lot easier to solder them onto the, uh, the new sims. Oh. 
Okay, and that's it. Now I think in order of um, the way I'm going to do this, I think it will be easiest to put the uh, capacitors and resistors on and then put the chips on. I just think it's going to be uh, an easier build to do it that way. Um, so let's start with the uh, with this side here with the capacitors and the resistors. So these are um, 100 nanofarad farad or 0.1 microfarad. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some solder onto these pads. Pretty decent amount of solder because, uh, as I mentioned before, these are um, 1206 size pads, but I've got 805 components, so they are smaller. So I want a fair bit of solder on these. Whoops, that's a lot. In order to uh, um, bridge the gap uh, between uh, the size of my little tiny component and the size of these great big pads. So yeah, we've got that one there. We're going to pop a one microfarad onto that. Let's just grab my one microfarad capacitor here. I'll grab two. Blip, blip. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get my hot air station running at slightly lower speed. If it's running too fast, um, I'll blow these little components away. So I'm going to get a nice big blob of flux onto there and some gunk as well. Um, grab the component, hit it with some hot air. There we go. Probably a bit more, more solder than I need, but you know, doesn't matter. Grab my second capacitor. There we go. And then I need to grab myself a little resistor as well. So this is a 33 ohm resistor. Whoopsie. Or It will be labeled with 331. And you can see that's the label we have on the PCB here as well, 331. There we go. You can see that the surface tension of the solar actually just pulls that component into the middle. I'm gonna probably drop on my um, LED now because uh, I just think it'll be easier to do that um, while this is flat, once I put the chips on, uh, it will make this board sort of rocky on the other side. So, see that for this one, I'm not going to put solder on first because uh, I'm not going to use a hot air station because my fear will be that I will melt these little LEDs. So, LEDs, as you know, are a diode, that's what the D stands for, and that means they allow flow in only one direction. So it's very important these get put on the right way. And we can see we've got a little arrow here in a line, and this one has a little green bit on one side. The green bit needs to go onto the side with the line of that little dyad symbol. So just try and hold him in position as best as I can. It's, the board's already a little rocky, so. This is making it a little challenging. Lee. Okay. So if I can push that down. Oh, piffle. Hands not feeling very steady today. One of the joys of getting old. Just need something to help stop this board from rocking. It's making my life a bit of a misery at the moment. Okay, that side's done. I really should put this into a uh, some sort of holder so that it doesn't bounce around the place. Clever person would. Okay, I think that's in. It's not my finest work, but it is functional. Now it's time for us to put a couple of chips on. So we've got our little indentation here on the left and we've got the indentation on the chip here. So we need to make sure they match up, get a nice 
and there's a decent amount of flux on these pads. They're nice big pads. I actually quite like soldering these sorts of chips. These are PLCC chips and uh, they're designed so they can be soldered directly onto a board or go into a socket. And uh, I quite like working with these. So I'm just gonna put that there. My general method of soldering these is I get them lined up. I solder one pin from one side, like that. I then spin them around and I solder one pin from the other side to make sure that we're all straight, like that. Okay, so now he's on pretty securely. Uh, I'll do the same for the other and then I shall solder them all. So, pop that there. And we'll get that on there once again. Do make sure that you put these around the right way because save you a lot of time from having to do things again. Make sure we get that as straight as possible. One pin, and then spin them around to the other side, and solder second pin. Come on, there we go. You didn't solder, did you? You evil cretin. There we go. Are you on now? I think he's on now. All right, so now, we're going to solder the rest. So just get some solder here and I do a little bit of the old drag soldering as they refer to it. So just dragging it along. This only works if you've got a decent amount of a good quality flux on there. Otherwise you will create bridges between these pins and we do not want to do that. Okay, let's do it the other side. Okay, looks good. And this one. Oops, I got some solder onto one of these pins down the bottom. That is gonna to have to go. Unacceptable. There we go. All right. And that, folks, is one finished RAM sim. And uh, got our little LED there, and we've got our two chips there. No parity, two capacitors, and one little resistor. So that one is good to go. Now I would love to just go and test this now, but I'm putting it in a computer where I need to put four in at once. Uh, so I need to make another three. Did you know that channel sponsor PCBWay is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in China? And they also provide 3D printing, CNC machining, flex PCBs, injection molding, stenciling, and PCB assembly. I get all of my PCBs from PCBWay because of their consistently fast turnaround and low prices. And if you like to tinker, you really should jump onto the PCBWay website and check out the huge library of shared projects. Loads of amazing gadget designs that you can try out for yourself.
okay, that's it. Now, one thing you should always do when you are soldering ICs is, first of all, take a moment to check to make sure that you've got them all around the right way. So I'm gonna have a quick look now, and we've got, yes, 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 they're all around the right way, that's great. Then the other thing uh, to do is I'm gonna put them under the microscope at an angle, make sure that I have got all the pins soldered and I don't have any bridges. Now, before anyone asks me if I'm going to be selling these four megabyte sims that I'm making, the answer is no, they're mine. My precious. Now it's time to test them. I've installed the sims in my Quadra 700. The Quadra has four megabytes soldered to the board, so combined with the four four megabyte sims, I should have a total of 20 megabytes. And there we have it, 20 megabytes of available RAM. So a big thank you to Kay for coming up with this idea and also a big thank you for sending these to try out. Please help to support projects like this. I've put links in the description for where you can find out more info and buy your own. Thanks for watching.